Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will show you how to prepare DevOps and Cloud Resume both for freshers as well as experienced engineers. Yes, you heard it right. I will prepare two resumes in this video. First will be a fresher resume and second will be an experienced DevOps engineer resume. So that's why I have two tabs open. First, I will complete the fresher DevOps resume and then I will prepare the experienced DevOps engineer resume. The format of the resume that I'm using will be shared on our Telegram channel. Link is available in the description. You can just go there and download the resume format. You can prepare your own resume after watching this video. And the projects that I will be using in the resumes will be taken from our Azure Zero to Hero playlist. Even if you are a AWS DevOps engineer, you can still watch this video because there will be a lot of learning. And after this video, you can go to our AWS Zero to Hero playlist and add the projects. Let's get started. First things first, you just have to modify the name. Let's say your first name is Devin and your second name is AI bot, just change it accordingly. And if you are a fresher, of course, you cannot have it as DevOps and Cloud Engineer. Let me call it as Aspiring DevOps Engineer. It is good to add your LinkedIn profile, even if you are a fresher, because these days recruiters prefer going through your profile on LinkedIn because you will have all your educational details and any achievements that you have, as well as these days people post a lot of blogs that can also be tagged in your LinkedIn. Provide the email and mobile number so that the recruiters can easily reach out to you. Let me say Devin AI bot is the Gmail address and this is the mobile number, for example. And this field was initially written for experienced engineer, but you can just modify it and write a couple of lines. You can just say aspiring DevOps engineer who is interested in problem solving and DevOps solutions. Now this is just a one liner that I've written, but you can also modify it as per your interest because this particular line defines what exactly you are. What are you looking for? So it have to be changed from person to person. Then before moving ahead with any other parts of the resume, one thing that I would like to mention is spend some 15, 20 minutes to understand or you can even spend more time to understand what are the things that are currently trending in the market. Why? Because even today, lot of times, lot of companies, the resumes are shortlisted by the HR or recruiters. Lot of companies don't have that advanced ATS softwares that will go through your profile and shortlist your profile. Still a lot of companies, HRs and recruiters go through your profile and HRs and recruiters are non-technical people. So they would look for the keywords, trending topics, and then they will forward your resume to the technical panel. Similarly, even if your profile goes to a ATS software, ATS will also be looking for the keywords. So that's why you need to understand what are the things that are currently trending in the market and add those things which will improve your chances for shortlisting of resume. Now, how do I do that? What should I do and how do I spend this 15, 20 minutes? It's very simple. Go to LinkedIn. You can also go to Naukri and open some 30, 40 job descriptions. Try to figure out what are the things that are common in this 30, 40 job descriptions? Because I follow the DevOps and cloud space quite actively, and I am also very active in LinkedIn. At this point of time, 
that is in March 2024, while I'm making this video, I know what are the things that are trending. But if you are watching this video sometime later, then please spend this time and understand what are the things that are trending. But for now, because we are preparing Azure DevOps engineer profile, the things that we need to add, number one, some knowledge on Linux. We have to show that you have knowledge on Linux. Number two, Git. Number three, there is no order of uh, significance. I'm randomly writing them down. Knowledge of shell scripting. Four, knowledge of CI CD, which is preferably Azure DevOps. Number five, you need to show some knowledge of Terraform. Number six, Ansible. Seven, containers. Eight, Kubernetes. If you cover the points that I'm writing down here, there are so many chances of your resume getting shortlisted. Nine, just add points related to Azure because this is a Azure profile. 10 achievements. Right? So if you add these 10 points, let's see how does the resume shape out. And towards the end of this video, you can tell me how is your resume looking. So let's get started. I will make sure towards the end of this video, all these points are covered. You might wonder, but Abhishek, why are you using this old school format resume? I still prefer using this old school format resume because even if it is ATS or for the recruiters, it will be very simple for them to go through your resume and identify the points that they are looking for. And it is very much readable when compared to the fancy resumes. So I would prefer this or a one pager resume from Canva, whatever you like. Right. Even if you want go with Canva where select a one pager resume from Canva or select the format that I'm showing. First cloud technologies, Azure build tools, Maven. If you have knowledge on Gradle, go for it. Otherwise you can just keep it as Maven container technologies, Docker and Kubernetes, which covers containers as well as container orchestration scripting. Go with shell and Python because these are the two things that are required. Version control system, Git, GitHub and GitLab just to improve your chances. But if you are not comfortable with any of these things, definitely Git, you have to be comfortable with. You don't have an option, but let's say you haven't worked with GitHub while you're practicing something or you're doing your proof of concepts only on GitLab. You can get rid of GitHub. Vice versa, you can just get rid of GitLab. Configuration management, Ansible, infrastructure as code, Terraform, CI CD, because we are talking about Azure DevOps, go with Azure CI CD or Azure pipelines. Now, this particular table or format basically represents whatever I have written here. It covered Azure, it covered Kubernetes, it covered containers, Ansible, Terraform, CI CD, Shell, Git, Linux, as well as Python. Right? We have everything covered in this simple tabular format. I haven't even prepared the projects part. I haven't even, you know, written anything else in the resume. But this just 10 lines of the resume shows that you have knowledge on the things that the recruiter is looking for. Now, the most important point is how do you prepare your project if you are a fresher? Do not go with n number of projects. Just have two projects or three projects at the most. That will be enough. So I will get rid of third project. But if you are very keen and if you think that Abhishek have worked a lot on the other projects, so I want to add more, you can do it. There is no problem. But for now, in this particular resume, I'm just going with two projects. Again, for the projects also, 
try to understand what are the concepts that are trending and what are the projects that you have practiced a lot. There are some really cool projects in this particular Azure Zero to Hero playlist. I will pick up two or three projects and show you how do you put them in the resume. Number one, let me pick up Azure CI CD pipeline. Right? So for the people who haven't watched the videos, so in day 14 and day 15, I have explained complete GitHub to Azure repos migration. And we have created a CI CD pipeline for a entire microservice architecture project, basically three tire microservice architecture project. And this project has multiple microservices, right? So I have prepared the CI CD pipelines for this, and I will try to showcase this in the resume. So I'll just say end to end CI CD pipeline implementation. Let me call it as project summary because you are a fresher and I'm assuming you don't have any prior knowledge, sorry, any prior working experience. You did not work as intern anywhere. Right. You can get rid of this particular timestamp. So project summary. The first project that I have is end to end CI CD pipeline implementation. Now, how do I write that? Very simple. Of course, you should implement the project without implementing the project. You cannot write these points, but I'm just trying to help you. So you can explain the project in two to three lines where you will say implemented end to end CI CD pipeline for a entire architecture microservice application this application comprises of five or let's say that particular project is actually made of three microservices each written in different programming language and there is a redis for caching and mysql database for storing the user information okay so this is how you write actually you know i just wrote this in couple of minutes if i spend more time i can improvise and i can write more things but overview is you write this in particular format and if required you can elaborate it further explaining what are the different programming languages that you have used so i can just say experience in or you can say this like created the pipelines for python dot net and java applications using azure ci pipelines and deployed the project or deployed the microservices on to the azure kubernetes service using argo cd experience in implementing advanced continuous delivery or advanced cd architecture using gitops and deploying services i mean microservices 
for every change that is created in the Azure repo. Okay, so I've explained the project in three points. Further, if you want to enhance it, you can say, how did you store your environment variables? How did you secure the information? How did you connect AKS with the Argo CD? How did you install? All that things also you can uh, add just for your reference. I have added three lines and one important thing, even in the three lines, take a look at the points that I have covered. So here I mentioned about AKS. So if someone is searching for AKS, they will find it. Kubernetes is a very buzzing thing, right? So I've covered Kubernetes. I've covered AKS. Argo CD is very much budding. So buzzing. So that's why I've used Argo CD. I've used the keyword called GitOps. If someone search for CI CD, they will find it multiple times because I've intentionally used it. Our CI CD here, CD here, CI here, right? And then I mentioned about Azure pipelines. I talked about Python, .NET, Java applications, whatnot, right? So you can also write one more point by implementing this project, I have gained experience not only in the multi tier architecture application CI CD, but also in Kubernetes containers, container orchestration and GitOps. But if you feel this point is duplicate, you can get rid of it. So this is about the project one. Now let's add project two. Okay, so in the project two, let's pick up another project. We just uh, picked up the CI CD, right? So from the Azure zero to zero, I will not pick up this one because this is again a three tier architecture deployment. We have deployed an e-commerce uh, application. Some subscribers might uh, prefer this particular uh, application. Some might prefer a e-commerce application where there are more number of microservices. So preference is yours. But the second project I am going to add is this one. Azure Key Vault integration with AKS. There is a reason why I would pick this one. I will show you. So here I will say DevSecOps because DevSecOps is quite trending these days. <coughs> Excuse me. So DevSecOps is quite trending these days. So I'll say DevSecOps secrets management on AKS. So if you add this project, lot of uh, recruiters as well as the technical panel while they are interviewing you, they will definitely ask you about this particular thing because at a fresher level, if you're talking about uh, security with DevOps, then they might be interested and you know, they will start talking about the project. And if you have really implemented this one, then there are very good chances that the interviewer will be impressed with you. So it's a very good one. And let's try to explain this. DevSecOps, let me get rid of this particular line. And no, I'm not much worried about the indentation because I'm sure you will take care of it. So I'm not looking so much into the indentation. So let me remove these points and add three to four points. I will start with explaining the project. Implemented secrets management on the Kubernetes clusters set up on Azure platform using Azure Kubernetes service, which is AKS. Using this project 
I have secured the sensitive information. What kind of sensitive information uh, that we secure in this particular video? If someone hasn't watched this video, basically what we did is if there are any pods and if the pod wants to read the sensitive information, rather than using the Kubernetes inbuilt secrets, we integrated Kubernetes with the HashiCorp, uh, sorry, Azure Vault, and we read the information from the Azure Vault. So that's what we did. So I'll say using this project, I have secured the sensitive information by storing the information on the Azure Vault, right? And what exactly did we do? By integrating Azure Vault with AKS using managed identities. The Kubernetes cluster will not have any sensitive information which so you know i'm just writing it uh, you can modify it accordingly after this probably let me write it in a better way here so i explained implemented secrets management on the kubernetes cluster set up on azure platform using azure kubernetes uh, service using this project i have secured the sensitive information by storing the information on the Azure Vault by integrating Azure Vault with AKS using managed identities. And what is more, uh, what more you can add about that particular project? So you can also say secured the stateful sets by reading the sensitive information from Azure Vault and mounting the secrets from Vault. Learned how to set up Azure Kubernetes service using uh, we actually did it manually but you know to make it uh, better you can say learned how to set up azure kubernetes service using terraform and also integrated the vault setup using terraform so that we will also cover the terraform part good so i have covered terraform i have covered kubernetes multiple times i have covered containers i have covered the microservice architecture and then we are left with covering the basic points such as linux shell scripting and python of course we haven't covered ansible as well so these are the things that i did not cover so what I can do is either I can add these points in these two projects or I can create one more project. But the idea is to keep it simple. I will be only using uh, two projects. So what I can do is in this particular project itself, I will add one more point to just say, how did I use Python in this particular project? I have already used uh, Terraform, right? So where can I use? Python. So what I can simply say is alternatively, I have also used Python to implement the similar setup using Azure SDK, right? So that you can cover it. Or like I've told you, if you want to add any different project in Python, you can also do that. There is no problem. We, al we already have Python for DevOps playlist as well. There I have shown you 
multiple python projects python jira integration i have shown you python github webhook integration we have uh, python api related projects so you can pick up the projects from the python for devops playlist as well and in this project probably uh, you can again say alternatively i have also learned how to deploy the microservices on to the azure kubernetes service using ansible A lot of people even today use ansible for ci cd if you want anything else related to ansible you can say managed configuration of the virtual machines of the aks cluster using ansible right or in this project you can say i have used python to set up the aks cluster and in this project you can say i have used python to set up the uh, sorry terraform to set up the aks cluster then go with your education details in the education details just add like you know instead of random college whatever the college that you have uh, working for because this person is devin ai bot let's say he is from the college cognition labs and this person llm and gpts i'm just making it up and you can add whatever is your uh, degree and all achievements is the very important section you might say but abhishek i don't have any significant achievements don't worry nothing is a smaller achievement you might have done something in your college at your college level you might have participated in any hackathons or coding fest you can also add that you now you can just say participated if not won participated in the hackathon xyz and if you won the hackathon that is even better you can just say winner of the hackathon if you have participated if you can say participated in the hackathon and you know if you are in the second place runner up you can change it accordingly then you might have completed some internal certification or you might have completed some course it can be course on udemy it can also be a course on youtube there is no problem no completed or you can just say certified if you have completed any certifications whatever you have the achievements if you are leading a college group if you are leading a user group or you have participated in multiple user group activities anything that you have done you can add in the achievement section so this is how you prepare a fresher devops resume important thing is do not add so many projects just add three projects but because of the time constraint i have just added two projects don't go beyond and add five projects six projects that will not help you perfect now let's try to prepare the experienced devops engineer resume again let me say devin ai bot let's assume this is the name of the person and because this is for experienced you need to have devops and cloud engineer or you can have senior devops engineer in your organization if the role is sde or whatever is the role just try to mention it linkedin profile is mandatory if you are an experienced engineer and let me just change it to devin ai bot at the red gmail.com and do not hesitate to give your mobile number it will be very easy for the recruiters to reach out to you we will use the same resume format literally the tabular format i can simply copy it because it will be the exact same thing you can just delete this particular thing and add it because this particular part is for the recruiters and for the ats if someone is searching things on your resume they have everything that is mentioned one more thing that i missed to add in the fresher devops resume part is you can also add one liner here if you are a fresher devops engineer uh, or you can also add it in the tabular format you can just write the name of the azure services that you are good with right you can probably uh, create one more line here insert a role below and you can just say azure services and add azure 
virtual machine azure whatever we have learned in this particular playlist if you just add them that will be much better so you can say azure iam you can say azure entra or microsoft entra id right you can add aks you can add uh, serverless that is azure functions you can add azure storage services right you can add azure cli just add these services also so that they will understand what are the services that you have worked on again for the experienced engineers also i would recommend that it will be practically impossible to uh, showcase everything for the freshers in their uh, two to three projects that they add so that's why it is good to have it in the tabular format i just added few services try to make sure you add what all services that you are comfortable with now this one this will remain exactly same i don't mean uh, that you have to use the same wordings but what i mean to say is just write two to three lines where you explain number of experience that you have right and just try to mention a point about yourself that you uh, like picking up the challenging roles or you know what you have uh, what is your expertise in the past so i just said dedicated and result driven devops professional with let's say five years of experience in optimizing and streaming it operations seeking a challenging role to leverage expertise in devops technologies and cloud technologies right now in the professional summaries here there is no restriction right for the freshers i have recommended not to add more than 3 to 4 projects but if you are a experienced engineer you cannot skip it if you have worked in five companies if you have worked in 10 companies you have to definitely add them and if you are a experienced engineer this will not be your projects right end to end ci cd pipeline devsecops these are not your projects what are your projects your projects are the company and the team that you have worked in that company i have seen lot of freshers sorry experienced engineers adding end to end ci cd pipeline as their project this is a blunder there is no chance of your resume getting shortlisted not even the recruiters but hrs themselves will understand that you have not worked on devops before so this is where lot of people's resume don't get shortlisted because similar to fresher they will add end to end ci cd pipeline as a project this is not a project for you this is a task in your project right what is your project the client that you are working for or if you are in a product based company the application that you are developing or the application team in which you are that becomes your project i'll give you an example let's say you are working in nike and in nike you are working for catalogs team so your organization is nike and your project is catalog right this is your organization this is your project and within this project you perform day to day activities like probably you perform day to day activities such as uh, infrastructure automation using terraform you perform configuration management using ansible you perform uh, scripting and automation using shell scripting and python these becomes your tasks don't mistake the projects of freshers with the projects as experienced engineers professional summary add your company just like i mentioned i don't know if nike is in hyderabad but i just added it nike hyderabad you worked as devops engineer senior devops engineer whatever you did and from which year to which year you have worked in nike you can also add one more thing about the project you can say catalog project right now try to add the points for example here i have added some points successfully added kubernetes clusters as runners to gitlab enhancing scalability and build performance see this is quite different from the freshers because if you are an experienced engineer you work on different tasks day to day wise freshers they do some proof of concepts they learn from udemy they learn from youtube channels or they implement some uh, simulation projects 
taking from uh, any other sources. But as experienced engineer, you go to the company, you have a customer, you have a client, you have a project, and their day to day work, day to day, you work on different things. Like, let me say, one of your tasks can be the same thing. I will use this particular same thing as a task in the experience engineer profile. Watch carefully. So here I'll say, let me just get rid of this and say, experience in securing the sensitive information on the Kubernetes clusters by integrating the AKS clusters with Azure what? Experience using the Azure managed identities to integrate Azure services with yeah, to integrate Azure services. The same thing that we have that we have done in this particular project, right? In the DevOps fresher role, I added this as the complete project. But here I am adding these things as a points in your project. And always try to add a lot of things in your latest project because people would prefer your experience from the latest project. So what I will do is I will try to cover these points in the latest project itself. Trust me, that will help a lot. So I have covered AKS clusters. I have covered Azure vaults. I have covered Azure managed identities. That is IAM part. Then you can talk about a CICD thing that you have learned from this particular thing. So you can just say experience in implementing CICD for multi-tier architecture microservices multi-tier architecture microservices using Azure pipelines and Argo CD. Then you can say experience in installing, configuring, and managing Argo CD to continuously for continuous delivery of software. Or you can say continuous delivery of microservices. And it is better you also use the term called GitOps here. Right? And I'll just remove these points to avoid the confusion and to show you very clearly. Did I remove this? Yeah. And then uh, we will add some more points. We'll just say experience in Python to talk to the or to create resources on the Azure platform using Azure SDK. One more point you can add with respect to Python, both freshers <coughs> and experienced engineers. You can say experience in implementing serverless architecture using Python and Azure functions, which we did in the previous class, right? So if you want, you can also elaborate. Implemented the Azure functions in Python to trigger the serverless functions using Azure 
blog when interviewer asks you to explain about this project you can uh, elaborate and you can say when a blob or when a file is pushed to the azure blob i have triggered the serverless function or if you want you can also write it here it depends on how much important you feel that particular thing and how much you can explain about that particular point if interviewer is asking you about it so if i feel very confident i will tell you i mean i will add that point implement the or i can say uh, something like this reduced the cost of azure blobs using the by setting up the triggers i can say this by setting up the triggers on the azure blob storage which triggers the azure functions to reduce the file size if the file size exceeds 1 gb whatever you would like to say and most importantly if you are an experienced engineer talk about the numbers something like improve the release efficiency by 20% by introducing the ci cd best practices such as gitops okay you can add points like this <laughs> and you can go through the other topics whichever you feel like very comfortable like let's say you are very comfortable with azure firewall or you are very comfortable with the networking concepts then try to add those points and make sure you add more and more number of points to the first project itself so if you even try to add the points that we covered in the azure zero to hero most chances are your resume get shortlisted you know do not add points like deployed jenkins on the azure vm this is just for your uh, experience just to learn things probably you can add experience deploying applications or experience setting up jenkins on the azure virtual machines and scaling them using the auto scaling groups right you can add that point experience in setting up the jenkins infra and integrating it with auto scaling which is virtual machine scale sets in azure right in aws it's called auto scaling in azure we call it as virtual machine scale sets perfect and then try to cover as many number of points as i have explained here you can say experience in implementing configuration management to manage 100 plus servers which are windows linux and you can also mention the linux distributions using ansible right so this is how you prepare and in your second project also try to add the things do not like do not ignore the points completely but just at least try to add four to five points and i would prefer if i was in your place i would not prefer anything beyond two to three pages try to keep it in one page but as your experience grows it will be practically impossible to add things in one page so try to do it in at least two to three pages do not go beyond that so that's all i have in today's video to explain you how to prepare the resumes and how to add the points to the resume and trust me go with a simple plain format resume or a single pager from canva do not use much fancy resumes sometimes recruiters or ats will not also scan your resumes so keep it simple make sure more number of uh, points are covered and make sure the points that you are adding to a resume are easily readable and you have a tabular format which explains the summary of your technical skills these are my suggestions 
I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comment section. How did you find this video? See you all in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.